Time for tonight's Aflac trivia question as we go to the fourth inning here at Yankee Stadium. Here it is. Who's the only player to have 200 hits and 100 RBIs in his rookie season? Think about that one. We'll have the answer for you in the bottom half of the inning. Braves up two to one here in game two as we go to the fourth inning. It'll be Ryan Klesko leading it off and to tell you about it, Don Sutton. All right, Pete. Klesko will be trying to tack another hit on. He had his hitting streak broken last night. Came off the bench to pinch hit. Now Ryan starting a new one. Single his first time up. Scored the first run of the game. Javi Lopez doubled him to third. And Tucker singled him home. Klesko's average creeping on up there. Remember for a while it was really down low. He's just shy of 280 with that extra base hit. First one to him inside, 1 0. Oh. Orlando Hernandez, 9 and 1 this year, combined a 7 and 1 record in Class A and Triple A. In nine starts, he worked 51 innings of minor league baseball, striking out 74. Posada trying to slow him down just a little bit. 3 and 0 to Clusco. They kept him pretty much on, on an inning and a, a pitch count as he was getting ready. Most he ever worked was seven and two thirds at Rochester. Plesko green lighted, gets his second hit. Is it going to be two? Curtis over to cut it off. Plesko will throw out the anchor at first. His second hit. Good start for the Braves in the fourth inning. And both of his hits have been opposite field base hits. And that little flare in the left field in the second inning. He's gotten quite a few hits lately the other way. And you and I have talked about this before. He's so strong that if he concentrates on that, he's going to accidentally hit 25 over. Well, he's at first now for Javi Lopez, who did himself a pretty good piece of hitting, trying not to strike out. Took a fastball down the right field line, got himself a double his first time up. Lopez now up to 307. And he and Eddie Perez continuing the fine offense by. Braves catching duo. Outside, 1 0. Hernandez's first three starts were against Tampa Bay, Montreal, and Cleveland. His best outing at Montreal, nine innings of four hitter. He only allowed one run. He struck out nine. He only walked one through 125 pitches. This is inside. It's 2 0. So after they kind of guarded him through the early part of the season, April, May, at the minor league level, and Mel Stottlemyre with the clicker right there, they, the fewest he's thrown up at the big league level has been 117 pitches. That was his first start. Came out leading seven to one. High and deep to left field, fair or foul? It's a foul ball. Two balls in one strike. He thought he had one in fair territory. <laughs> but about six or eight feet to the left of the foul pole. You know, you hit one like that, it's going to make it to the upper deck. You, you dream about that if you've got the power to hit home runs. And then it's fouled by just a few inches. So he is just now getting back to home plate. Brian Klesko has gone all the way back to first. The home run total dropping off a little bit after a red hot May, but still 16. I sure bet to surpass last year's total. Three balls in one strike. Braves appear to be just a little bit more patient with him the second time through. Yeah, they do. He has fallen behind almost every hitter this second time through the order. The ball to strike ratio getting almost close to even. There goes Klesko. Pitch will miss inside. A single and a walk. They're at first and second for Michael Tucker. Second walk issued by Hernandez, and only the eighth he has walked all year. Tucker got the Braves on the board in the second inning after the Clusco single, the Lopez double. He dropped the single in, picked up his 34th RBI of the year. Then got caught wandering a little bit. Too. Did some good base running to get the second, and then 
got caught wandering too far away from home on a fly ball to right field by Andrew Jones. He ended up getting doubled up. There's strike one to Tucker. Fifty three thousand last night. I'm thinking they're going to top that by a little bit tonight. Yeah they got more people out in left center field in those seats out there out beyond the monuments. Good off speed pitch and Tucker finds himself down in the count. Oh and two. They rarely open up that section here at Yankee Stadium. Last night they did. It was about half full tonight. It looks like every seat is occupied out there. And if you notice because it is occupied the Braves bullpen retreating to the bunker. That is not the most cordial place in New York to sit. No. Or warm up. <laughs> oh and two to Tucker. Got him. Strikeout number four and a big one for Orlando Hernandez in the same pitch. It looked like to me Pete that he got Chipper Jones on. Yeah, he throws that breaking ball that kind of backs up. It almost looks like a screwball. And he throws it to left hand hitters with a lot of success. His fourth strike out of the game. There are a lot of us who wish you, we had known him a long time ago. That's a pitch you'd love to have. Andrew Jones flied to right his first time up. On the ground, Abrocious, and he bobbles it. Won't get anybody. Break for the Braves and air for Brocious, and the bases are loaded. Never know exactly why an error is made. That might have hit the cut of the grass right there and taken a little bit of a high hop, but you, looking at the play, it almost looked like the, the ball was not hit that sharply. It looked like Brocious was so anxious to try to turn that double play. And he was just a little too quick looking up after the ball got to him. That's his 10th error of the year. Klusko is at third. Lopez at second. Jones at first for Ozzy Guillen. First time up. Drew his 10th walk of the year. You see his batting average. A rejuvenation for him since he was released and then joined the Braves. Six strike one. Good speed and in the left handed batter's box and a good batting average with the bases loaded all the ingredients you like to have if you're trying to stay out of the double play. The end has not grounded in the one since he put on a Braves uniform. Two to one Braves we're at the top of the fourth inning glad you're with us. A much ballyhooed four game series. One and one. And a couple of managers who are getting sick and tired of talking about it. <laughs> yeah. As big a series as it is for the fans, uh, the managers have answered so many questions over and over and over again, and the same questions over and over and over again. They can't wait for the game to start. Yeah, it ain't the World Series. It's a part of the season, but you can actually own a game, only gain a half game in your league. You're not sure somebody else. You're not beating anybody else in your division or your league. On the ground and foul. What and two to get in. And it's a little bit easier on the Braves. The Braves have the first two games here in New York and then go home and they're home for the rest of the week. The Yankees, after these two games here, go down to Atlanta, play two. Then they got to come back up here for a weekend series with the New York Mets at Shea Stadium. And, and if Joe Torre thinks he's been getting questioned about the Braves, <laughs> what a week! Again, nine strikeouts in uh, about 80, 85 at bats. So he has been tough to fan. A little outside, two and two. Oh, you called it earlier. He loves going at that outside corner with the breaking ball with two strikes. That's a good pitch. A lot of hitters will give up on that. Good pitch, but you don't want to get in the habit of throwing it every time. Nope. Those good hitters will adjust to that. Yes. Just missed. Three balls, two strikes. Three balls, two strikes. Base is loaded. Uh, 
That's close. So Guillen will await the 3 2 pitch. Ball four. He walks in a run. Well, there's that 11th walk you were looking for. Got to take that ball out of play. Well, there are two oddities there. You got Hernandez who doesn't walk many, and you almost got to throw it in a dugout to walk Guillen. But he draws the walk. That's walk number three issued by Hernandez. Guillen picks up the RBI. The break. Fusco scores, and it's three to one, and that's going to bring Mel Stottlemyre out of the dugout. And he'll need to have Jorge Posada come out there to help him translate. These these visits to the mound take a little bit longer than uh, the normal would. Yeah, bilingual. And Derek Jeter there just kind of acting as a buffer. Good stuff. Uh, his stuff has been good all night long. He's just just missing. Just become a little too fine the last couple of innings. He's trying to locate it too precisely. Do you think that happens? You and I have watched a lot of young pitchers pitch against the Braves. Do you think that that happens sometimes? It's almost like pitching to a hitter's reputation as well as pitching to a team's reputation. Well, all the people I know that were good pitchers, including yourself, always have told me they never pitch to a hitter. They always pitch to the catcher. And if you're up there thinking about who that hitter is, Instead of trying to work together with your catcher to make pitches, you're probably going to have some control difficulties. Here's Curtis Bryant. He's one out of two, and he takes one outside. I was talking with Greg Maddox last night. I, that, that is one of the more enjoyable parts of being in this business, getting to just hear him tell you why he does things the way he does them and how he approaches games, and he, he doesn't miss a trick. He does not miss a trick. Curtis Pride chases a batter and make it one and one. I guess the one regret I have in my career is that I never got to play with him. I think he would have been worth about 75 or 80 more wins. He loves to pitch. And the he hates of pitching. And he hates to lose. Yep. And he compared a loss pitching to something I've never heard a pitcher say before last night. First the pitch here. One ball, one strike. Base is still loaded. One out. Braves up by two. Missing outside again, two and one. What did he say? He said to him, losing a game as a pitcher, it almost feels like you see some hitters just give up and at bat sometimes when they're up 13 to one. They try to yank one out of the ballpark instead of using their just their natural stroke and try to get one more hit. He said that's the same feeling he has when he loses a game. He said I'm only out there every five days. I don't have 600 at bats a year to give one up. Right. By him with the fastball. Two balls, two strikes. He's already thinking about his next start. It was an hour after the game last night. He's already talking about his next time out, which will be against the Blue Jays. A lot of pitches and a complete contradiction of what we're used to seeing with Hernandez's control. He had a four to one strikeout to walk ratio coming into this ballgame. Already he's walked three, he has struck out four. Too much time. Lopez at third, Jones at second, Guillen at first. Braves with single runs in the second, third, and the fourth inning. Two strike. He's shaking off a lot. Is it time for that backdoor hook again? Remember, this is the same sequence he went through with Tripper Jones. In the air now to play, and it was the same pitch. He's going to have to be careful not to fall into a pattern of doing that every single time he gets to two strikes. Romero Mendoza up now in the Yankee bullpen. Mentioned him a little earlier as the starter whose spot Orlando Hernandez took. Yeah, if you're going to do that, you're going to fall into a pattern. You're going to have to make all perfect pitches. He's going to throw it again, and it's outside. Full count again, three balls, two strikes to Curtis Pride. You got Javi Lopez at third with better than average speed for a catcher. But after that, you got good speed behind him. Andrew Jones can run, Ozzie Guillen can still run. Yeah. 
Ball four. He doesn't get the call. Back to back walks. He walks in another one. Bobby Lopez will score. Everybody moves up 90 feet, and it's four to one Braves. And some of that patience that you talked about the Braves hitters showing after the first time around the order really paying off here in the fourth inning. Two bases loaded walks four in the game now for Hernandez four RBIs now for Curtis Pride and a four to one lead for Atlanta. One of the things we have heard Joe Torre obviously not happy with the call but not going to get into it yet. Lopez scores. And here's Keith Lockhart. 1 and 0 to him. We talked a little bit earlier about his being a 28 year old rookie. Out of play 1 and 1. Sometimes you watch body language and you watch actions and you wonder if he might not be getting just a little bit flustered. Well, it looks like he hasn't been able to throw the breaking ball quite where he wants to all night long really. Had a couple of them that caught the corner and got the call on. Again it's out of play and it's one and two to well, Lockhart. He, he's thrown a lot of breaking balls on the first pitch to hitters and he hasn't been ahead of any of them. He's been falling behind them so he has not thrown that breaking ball for strikes very often tonight. The master of damage control right there. Got him. Made a good two strike pitch with the breaking ball. He picks up his fifth strikeout, second out in the inning. Maybe the best one he's thrown this inning with two strikes on a hitter. It had the plate. It was a little bit low, possibly, by the time it got there, but too good to take. And here comes the eighth hitter in the inning for the Braves. It's Chipper Jones. He's flied to left and he struck out swinging, struck out on a 3 2 breaking ball. To center field, that's going to fall in. Andrew Jones will score. Guillen is being waved home. The throw comes in the second. They may have Curtis Pride, but they do not. More good brace running for the Braves. Chipper Jones gets a pair of RBIs, and it's six to one Braves. And what happens to you when you keep falling behind hitters, throwing a breaking ball? You get so determined to. Get ahead of McCow, you just lay one right in there, just trying to get a strike. Look where that pitch was. Belt high right down the middle. 62 RBIs now for Chipper Jones. And it'll be the end of the night for El Duque. Braves having no problems with the Cuban phenom. Six to one Atlanta. They go to their bullpen. Ramiro Mendoza will be coming on as manager Joe Torre makes the Bell South call to the bullpen. Some people say clear coat cars don't need wax. Clear coat's thinner than the piece of paper. So what protects the clear coat? New Turtle Wax Emerald Series Car Wax. Waxing with Emerald Series puts on four times the Carnauba wax as the number one brand with no powdery residue. Do your best wax job ever. Turtle Wax Emerald Series. Emerald Series is the best hard shell finish. Turtle Wax. And come down hard on grease with new Turtle Wax Purple Muscle Heavy Duty Cleaner. Dilbert for Office Depot. I've decided to abandon logic and manage by cliches. It won't be easy, but I'll take it one bird at a time. And remember, the customer is always right-handed. This is actually an improvement. Here's a real improvement. Office Depot's best catalog ever. Easier to use, easier to read, more products. Call today for your copy and start getting fast, free delivery, guaranteed low prices. Business is crazy, but Office Depot makes sense. Well, a short night for Orlando Hernandez. Three and two-thirds innings with six hits and six runs allowed to this point. And while Ramiro Mendoza takes his warm-up tosses, let us remind you that Turner Sports will have complete coverage of the 1998 NBA Draft from Vancouver. Draft coverage starts tomorrow night at 7.30 Eastern over on TNT. Conversation you saw in the dugout. Jose Cardinal taking a... Having a conversation with uh, Hernandez. 
And he finally Hernandez just kind of threw his hands up and said I don't know. But he'll turn it over to Mendoza and Mendoza coming into what will be his 16th appearance. Only his fifth as a reliever in 73 innings 25 strikeouts are hit 265. Last year he did a good job coming out of the bullpen. He made 24 appearances as a reliever. Three and one and an earned run average below three somewhere in the two nines. Made his fourth relief appearance on Sunday. One run two hits and an inning and a third with a couple of strikeouts. First time that he came out of the bullpen this year for the Yankees would have been back uh, May the 6th. Came on in place of Mike Stanton who got hasta la bye bye. That's the one he got kicked out of. He prefers starting but he's the best insurance policy the Yankees have right now for their rotation. They've got a couple of pitchers in there like David Cohen who have broken down at times. And if anything like that happens to any of the regular five starters this guy's right there ready to go. He'll face Andres Galarraga. Two outs runners at the corner starts him with ball one. Ryan Klesko started it all with a single. A line drive to left field. And he's back in the on deck circle. Pride at third, Jones at first. A chance for Brocius. He'll go the short route. That'll put a lid on the fourth inning, but the Braves push four across. They do it on only two hits. Take advantage of El Duque's wildness. As we head to the bottom of the fourth, Braves up by five. In South Dallas, a lot of folks like to work in their cars, and a lot of them come to AutoZone. They save money on top quality parts, and they find helpful people like Rocky Brown. Oh, sure, there are other parts stores in town, but Rocky's the kind of guy folks go out of their way to see. He's good at solving problems, and he really knows his parts. You see, when it comes to getting the right part, the right price, and good advice, there's just no place better than AutoZone. Do you know why the 99 cent super value menu has lasted nine years? Because the food is so good. And because day in and day out, you can't get a better value. Nine years. Look at that. I still have the same tie. Wendy's super value menu, 99 cents every day. There have been only seven Wheaties champions this century. Better make that eight. Introducing Tiger Woods, a new generation of Wheaties champion. Dilbert for Office Depot. Psst, avoid the pointy-haired boss today. I proved him wrong about something. Oh, now he's in a state of boss disequilibrium until he proves he's right about something. They're photocopies. You don't need to proofread each one. We'll see about that. Need to copy your paper? Come to Office Depot, the world's largest seller of office products. The best brands, guaranteed low prices, everything for all your home and business needs. Business is crazy, but Office Depot makes sense. Let's give the answer now to tonight's AFLAC trivia question. Remind you what the question was. The only batter to have player to have 200 hits and 100 RBIs in his rookie season. Joe DiMaggio, 206 hits and 125 RBIs in 1936. And did not go into the Hall of Fame on the first ballot. With Omar all Garcia Cara almost did it last year. Two RBIs away from accomplishing it. Jody. Magnificent career. Jeter to lead it off in the bottom of the fourth for the Yankees. Glavin now with five to play with. It's 1 0. Oh. Jeter, O'Neill, and Martinez. First time up, he took a pitcher's pitch. Good pitch from Glavin and hit it into the right field seats. Just fair. The only run of the night. The only hit of the night for the Yankees. 2 0 oh to the Yankees shortstop. Another good year. 323. That home run is ninth of the year. Again, taking a shot to the right side. Two and one. The line on Hernandez, three and two thirds innings, six hits, four runs, three were earned. Walked four, struck out five. Put something in almost every column. Another shot toward the right side. We were talking earlier. It, of course, is a long way away, but now with the Braves up by five, it's not too early to start thinking about it. Remember in the open, we, we were saying that Tom Glavin has done some of his best pitching after a Braves loss. 
He's the kind of guy that could pitch in the middle of a hurricane and not lose his cool. There's what he's done. Three and two. He's always been that way. He's always been from the time he was a rookie and was getting pounded around a little bit his rookie year. You can never read anything nope. on that face. And he never throws in the towel. He never says, oh, heck, here it is, hit it. That piece of hitting by Jeter to stay alive, it's still three and two. Sometimes you see guys, Pete, when they run into a little bit of a struggle, and we have seen him struggle in the first inning for a number of years. But sometimes a lot of guys, you see them just rear back and fog it and say, nothing I can do about it anyway. Never loses, he never stops being Tom Glavin, the pitcher. In the air to left field, a mile high for Ryan Klesko. He'll chip the ice off and throw it back in. There's out number one. That's, by my counts, eight in a row set down by Tom Glavin. And he'll face Paul O'Neill. O'Neill, the Jeter home run. But then Glavin made some good pitches to Martinez, got the ground ball to second, got the double play to end the first inning. The veteran Paul O'Neill started with Cincinnati, came over here, and has put together good numbers for the Yankees. Ball and a strike to O'Neill. Thirty-five years old. That's into shallow left center. Late break by Andrew Jones, and he's not going to be able to get to it. A perfectly placed base hit by Paul O'Neill. Second hit of the night for the Yankees. It's one of the reasons he's in there now against left handers. He doesn't try to pull everything. See that swing? That was a very just make contact type of swing. Just trying to put it in play. He used to be a guy that got up there and tried to pull everything. And for that reason, a pitch like that, he would have hit a ground ball to second base a few oh, years he, ago. He really blossomed after coming over to the Yankees in a deal that sent Roberto Kelly to Cincinnati. He'll stand at first for Tito Martinez, grounded into the double play. One out of five against Glavin, takes strike one. This guy, one of the quietest, and I think you have to categorize him as a superstar, never goes out after the limelight, just does his job, has fun playing. Fly to left field, Klesko again with a bead on it. Again puts it away for the second out. Glavin will try to get Tim Raines to put a lid on the fourth inning. Raines a hitting star last night for the Yankees, a pair of doubles, but the big one. A double over the head of Andrew Jones in center that played it too gave the Yankees a lead they never gave up. You see what he did his first time up against Glavin. Reigns came into this ball game hitting just a shade over 300. He's now four out of 14. They call him Rock. His son Tim Jr. is called Little Rock. And was just drafted. Uh, you did a feature the other day on radio that was uh, interesting, Pete, about uh, all of the sons of major leaguers that went this year. A ton of them drafted. 32 players drafted this year who are sons of former major league players. Ball at a strike to Rain. Including a lot of former Braves. Adrian Devine's son was a fourth round draft pick. Jeff Burrow's son, of course, a first round draft pick. Frank LaCordy's son was drafted by Cincinnati. In the top 10 with hits. Out of play, two and one. Gary Matthews had another two. son that was drafted. He's got two sons now in pro baseball. So a lot of uh, former Braves. Hard to believe those little kids we saw running around the ballpark are starting to play professional baseball. You got to make you a proud papa when you see that happen. And very few of the players that I know and the names you're talking about. Well, none of the ones that you mentioned there ever tried to push their kids into doing. It. They just kind of let it evolve. Two and two to range.
O'Neill can run. He has eight steals, but Brains, one of the only five steals this year, but one of the premier base stealers in the history of baseball. A couple weeks ago, he picked up his 800th stolen base. Little outside, full count, three and two. O'Neill will be on the move. Andres Galarraga letting Glavin know he'll be back behind him, so it'll be a running jump for Paul O'Neill. I will never forget the game that Tim Raines played his first game of the year in 87. He had been a free agent. They decided to re-sign with Montreal. When you do that, you can't play until the first of May. So he didn't have any spring training. Signed with the Expos, he re-signed with the Expos on the 1st of May, played on the 2nd of May in a Grand Slam home run, went 3 for 4, beat the Mets on national television. So much for spring training. No that spring was for one day of workouts. Of course, he was working out on his own. But That's when all the collusion stuff was yeah. taking place. Another payoff pitch to Reigns. Another foul ball, still 3-2. and two. Same thing happened to Bob Boone. He rejoined the Angels in May that year. Unfortunately, my pal Bob didn't make his biggest splash his first day back then. <laughs> Six to one. Bottom of the fourth. O'Neill on the move. Lavin with another chance. He is picking and grinning tonight. There's out number three. No runs ahead, no errors, and one left. We've completed four. Braves lead it. Six one. Think an all-purpose water sealer is all wood needs? Look beyond the beads. Sun damage, mildew, splitting and warping destroy the beauty of wood, even pressure-treated wood. That's why Olympic Deck Care products not only waterproof, but are specially formulated to deliver the advanced protection wood really needs and the look you really want. Get protection that goes beyond the beads. Get Total Deck Care from Olympic. Olympic protects wood beautifully. Piece of paper. So, what protects the clear coat? New Turtle Wax Emerald Series Car Wax. Waxing with Emerald Series puts on four times the Carnauba Wax as the number one brand with no powdery residue. Do your best wax job ever. Turtle Wax Emerald Series. Emerald Series is the best hard shell finish. Turtle Wax. And come down hard on grease with new Turtle Wax Purple Muscle Heavy Duty Cleaner. Jack Foley, famous bank robber. From the creators of Get Shorty. Stop! Get your hands in the air! Don't point that thing at me. George Clooney. Be surprised with all you can get and ask for it the right way. Jennifer Lopez. Got to get out and tussle a little bit. We tussled. Thing Rains. Don't expect a tip. I'll just take your car. And Albert Brooks. Nice house. Thank you. Out of sight. Rated off. Starts Friday at theaters everywhere. Braves Baseball on the Superstation is brought to you by Olympic. Get everything you need to protect and beautify your deck from Olympic, America's number one selling exterior stain. And by Turtle Wax, the leader in car appearance products. One of the most famous ladies in the whole world, the Statue of Liberty. We're at Yankee Stadium. The Braves lead it 6-1 to one as we head to the fifth inning. Ryan Klesko up for his third time. He has had himself a perfect night to this point. Two for two. The average up to 280. Takes the first one from Ramiro Mendoza. Second pitcher of the night. Mendoza came on in relief of Orlando Hernandez. His worst outing in his young career. Three and two thirds inning. On the ground he's three for three. Three singles for Ryan Klusko. And two of them to the left field. One of them up the middle. Somewhere Ryan Klesko is going to get a little kitty and that's a little bit of a change of pace for him to, to spread it all over. Well, most of those 31 to right field came first six to eight weeks of the year. He has been much more adept at spreading him around lately. He is at first for Javi Lopez a double and a walk and a run scored. First pitch to him is a strike. Somewhere you know somebody's going to be kidding Ryan about being the world's biggest punch and Judy hitter too. 
Somebody will be getting on him. Swing and a miss by Javi Lopez. Good off speed pitch from Ramiro Mendoza. Remember, this is the role Men uh, Mariano Rivera had before he eventually moved into being a setup man and then a closer. You can pitch more innings in middle and long relief in the American League because of the DH. Your spot in the batting order doesn't come up at all, so you don't have to worry about getting a pinch hit for after only an inning or so. One, two, three, U turn for Javi Lopez. First strikeout recorded by Mendoza. One gone here in the fifth inning. This is really a role that the National League pitching staffs don't have. A guy to come in in the third or fourth inning and maybe give you three or four. Hardly any teams do that. Tucker's had a good night. Single in one. Well, he's got a night of mixed reviews. Single in one, got doubled off and, and struck out, but he got struck out on some nasty pitches. Fouls the first one away, 0 and 1. Mendoza out of Panama. It's the country that gave us one of the greatest hitters I ever saw. And I bet I know who you're talking about. He won a few American League batting titles. Didn't yes, he? he did. And he is now the hitting instructor for the Anaheim Angels, Rod Carew. In the air to center field, hit pretty deep. Curtis back to the warning track, back to the wall, and pulls it in in front of the 408 sign. A home run in most other yards. He used every inch of center field for out number two. One of the few ballparks you can catch that ball in here at Yankee Stadium. 408 feet to straightaway center, and that's right where Michael Tucker hit it, right to the dead center field part of this ballpark. You see the distance marker coming into view, and he is right up against it. To make the catch. That'll bring up Andrew Jones. Andrew has been on once, but it was on an air. Right in the middle of that inning that the Braves picked up the four runs. Sends the first one to third. That'll take care of the Braves. Braves get the leadoff single, but leave Ryan Plusco stranded. We're halfway home. Pete's headed for radio. Joe's going to join us, and tonight we're going to let you leave. Joe wouldn't let you get. Middle way through, six to one Braves. Mm -hmm. Oh, you have a minute? Uh, sure. What's up? The cellular acquisition. Look at this proposal. First Union? Yeah. They've done plenty of these. They're ready to underwrite the entire transaction. Uh-huh. And they'll take the lead in syndication. Whoa. That'll make things easier. No kidding. Uh, can they move fast? They're ready to meet. Okay. Well, it's your call. Hand me the phone. Fuel and out the door. Feel the heat radiating out of your skin. It's nasty hot. We asked some of the hottest guys in the pits to switch antiperspirants. Ultra guy degree, body heat activated. Wow, I've never seen this before. When your body heat rises, degree ultra dry's powerful new form releases extra protection when you need it most. This is one of the few products that can keep up with me. It kept me dry, ultra dry. Worked better than my old stick. New degree ultra dry. Now more than ever, your body heat turns it on. The proof is in the pits. With days in hotels in over 1,800 cities and towns, finding a place to stay doesn't have to be a big production. Days in. There you go. The Michelin X1, with a six-year unlimited mileage tread life warranty, gives you better wet traction than any rain tire, plus Michelin control in most driving conditions. After all, it hasn't rained that much in years. Middle of the fifth inning, Braves lead at six to one. We're joined by Joe Simpson. What'd you do to Pete last night? We had to kick him out tonight. Yeah, I know. Last night things got a little haywire in here when I thought I was supposed to stick around, but uh, I was the one that got kicked out last night. And tonight the Braves are doing the kicking there, scoring some runs, taking advantage of some breaks that they got early. Nice vest. Thanks, you too. Thanks for calling. Let me team, know. Team vest. Curtis to lead it off. By the way, we are working with a little bit of an unusual rotation, which I'm sure you picked up for the last four days because. Our partner and friend Skip Carey has been on the 15 day disabled list. He serves his time tomorrow and will rejoin us as the week progresses and glad to have him back. But that's why one of us stays for nine and the other one flip flops the other two flip flop in the middle. Curtis sends it in the air to right field. Tucker will put it away.
and then the wheels came off. He had a little trouble. The Braves weren't offering at that fastball. It was just a little off the corner some. And uh, he wasn't getting some calls that he got earlier, too. Strawberry will bat with one gone. First time up fly to center. Against Glavin, Daryl Strawberry, eight out of 33. The three of the eight have left the yard. You surprised to see him in against the lefty? Strawberry? Mm -hmm. Not really. I mean, uh, you know, here's another veteran manager, Joe Torrey, who knows Glavin, likes to work that change up to right handers, and he's left his three big bopper left handers in there tonight. That may be the reason he's in there. Fair or foul, it is a foul ball within inches of a home run. You don't often see him go the other way like that. That was a pitch that he stayed with a lot longer than he did his last at bat when he flied to center. But Greg Maddox was talking about their hitters tonight, saying how smart they are. are. They're all veterans. It's tough to set them up. And these guys are have been around. They know what it takes to get on base against an off-speed change-up type pitcher. Two and one to Strawberry, comebacker. There you are, base hit. Number three for the Yankees, a home run and a pair of singles. I like that graphic you guys had a minute ago about Tom's record, though, after a Braves loss and how tough he is. Five and zero oh after six losses. There it is again, and maybe tonight. Another victory to add to that. Tells you a little bit about a man's character, too, as well as his stuff, doesn't it? Well, he pitched well here last year, and he, I guess, figured it out how to keep everybody away from that short right field porch, and he's carried it into this start. Catcher Jorge Posada up for his second time, takes a strike from Glavin. You see Posada's number. He shares catching duties here. Nine multi hit games as a part time player. One and one. This is a guy, though, that they've been counting on for a couple of years. They knew he was going to be the guy just a matter of time as he was working his way up. Pretty good strong. home run total for 105 games. Mm -hmm. Very strong. Doesn't look it, though. See, he doesn't look like your prototypical big heavy dude. I mean, big strong guy. You know who he reminds me of a little bit? And he's a little. Stockier in a way, but he reminds me a little bit of Benito Santiago. Mm. He's got a very good throwing arm. He's got some line drive power. He's going to be in pinstripes for a long time if he stays healthy. Two balls in one strike. Make it three and one. Glavin gave up the home run to Jeter in the first. He gave up a single in the fourth to O'Neill. And then a one out single here in the fifth inning. All three of the hits coming after one out. Could be two. Lockhart will go to Guillen. Guillen to first. Two for the price of one. What a lid on the fifth inning. No runs a hit, no errors, and nobody left. Guillen turning it at second. That's five in the books. It's six to one Braves. Wednesday on CNN Newsstand. They're fast, sleek, and very cool. But which one is the hottest motorcycle of the year? Take a test drive with corporate executives from top companies on CNN and Fortune. Wednesday, 10, 9 central on CNN. Watch the drama unfold when basketball's rising stars take their dreams all the way to the NBA. The 1998 NBA Draft. Live coverage begins tomorrow at 7.30. Only on TNT. In June, the biggest movies are on TBS. More stars and more big stars. This is Imagine TV. Uh, look at all this inventory. If we could just think of a big name for a sale, we could get all these clothes out. Clothes out! It's customer appreciation time at your Mercury dealer. Get 0.9% APR or $750 cash back on Sable. Also get additional customer appreciation savings of up to $1,000 on select Lincoln and Mercury vehicles. What do you think, the red or the blue? It's a tie. Till next time, imagine yourself in a Mercury. For an Independence Day celebration with hometown feel and big city flair, come to the city of Fairfax. 
festivities begin at 10 a.m. with a parade through the historic downtown. After the parade, head over to Fire Station 3 for Old Fashioned Fireman's Day. Then top the day off bright with the fabulous evening show and fireworks display at Fairfax High School beginning at 7 p.m. Sponsors of the event are Bashir and Edgemore, BB&T, and WBIG Radio. For more information, call 385-7858. He's on top six to one time for the Budweiser game summary. Tom Glavin has been breezing right along thanks to a big inning in the fourth where the Braves took advantage of some walks and an error. Ozzie Guillen and Curtis Pride have been in instigators tonight as Guillen is batting ninth Curtis Pride first and uh, it's kind of nice to see guys who have not been in the lineup too much do something to contribute and Pride doing that tonight is the DH. That's happened this whole road trip. The B team has really come yeah. through. Gerald Williams has had a couple of Super Bowl games. Danny Batista has been in the middle of a couple of important plays and Ozzie Guillen will kick it off here. He's been up twice and stopped the presses. He's walked twice. They took the ball out of play last time. It was his 11th walk of the year. <laughs> I think that's a career record for him. I think he walked 10 times all of last year. Picked up an RBI with one of the walks. You see what Joe was telling you. He scored two runs. He, he's up against Romero Mendoza. Jumps on the first and fouls it out of play. 0 and 1. Well, there you are. Career high 26. He's picked up 11 as a part time player with about 80 at bats this year. One year, 500 at bats and only 10. One and one. I'm not sure what the exact number is on his average down, but I think if you take away that one for 14 at the beginning when he first joined the ball club, he's hitting right around 290. So he's done a terrific job filling in for Walt when Walt's been hurt and when he's away from the team now. And that terrific job gets even better. Possible extra bases. It's a double. He led off the third with a walk and scored. He leads off the sixth with a double. And for Guillen, his fifth double since he put on a Braves uniform. Last night, he put a good swing on a pitch from Rivera that handcuffed Tino Martinez at first base. And tonight, he's staying with the ball, keeping his head on the ball a little bit longer. You don't really expect or look for him to pull the ball, but he's done it twice in the last two nights. Good speed at second for Curtis Pride. Pride one out of two. He has a walk thrown in there. He has an RBI. To center field and deep. Curtis on the move. This might get Guillen to third. The catch, the tag, the throw. He's at third. Get him over any way you can. Good base running, too. Ozzy didn't go back to the bag until he realized that Curtis was going to have a shot at it. Did you get the impression Curtis Pride was trying to pull that ball? He's trying to do the job, trying to get him over to third. I think he was, and he's a good fundamental player. Wasn't able to get all the way around on it, but did the job. You'll take it. Keith Lockhart will be looking for his first hit of the night. This is his fourth time up. He's grounded to first, grounded to second. Struck out swinging some of the best pitches of the night made by Orlando Hernandez. Doesn't get the first one. Phil Sivens just gave me a note that says that since that one for 14, Ozzy Guillen is now hitting 308. Outstanding contribution. Yankees with the infield in. That'll get him home. Curtis backpedaling. We'll stick it in his pocket. Sacrifice fly for Lockhart, his second RBI of the night. More breathing room for Glavin. It's 7 1. Fundamental baseball there, wasn't it? A B C get them on get them over get them in. First person I ever heard use that term was Ted Simmons. When he was a part of Harvey's wall bangers base is clean for Chipper Jones. One and oh. You see what he's done tonight. Picked himself up a couple of RBIs in the fourth inning. And with a 7 to 1 lead, as you get down near the last few at bats here in Yankee Stadium, you might see some of these left handed hitters go for it. I think he was there. A little tardy, 1 and 2. I was happy to see Klesko pick up some hits tonight because in batting practice, 
That's all he was doing was going for that upper <laughs> deck and he was having a hard time getting one up in the air. He was hitting line shots. Two balls and two strikes to Chipper Jones. Pete and I were saying that somewhere maybe on the flight tonight he's going to get kidded about being the world's biggest punch in Judy. Though. <laughs> Full count to Chipper. Did you deposit a few into the right field porch. Yes I did that was fun it was fun to take batting practice here and in Detroit. On the ground toward short Jeter is there. That'll take care of Chipper Jones but the Braves use some ABC baseball to tack on one more. Bottom of the six the lead is six. There's ordinary beer. Then there's the smooth, refreshing taste of Michelob Light. Beer or Michelob. We have the how-to clinics uh, where we show the customer how to do the project themselves. It's very hands-on. The customers are encouraged to come up to the front and actually start grouting the tile or spackling the drywall. It, it, it's excellent. They've gotten some grout in their fingernails. They realize, no, it's not all that tough. They get involved. They get pumped. They take notes. They want to learn it and you're going to teach them. And I think it's encouraging people to do things they thought might be too hard. To have people go home and do that and come back and say, boy, that was a lot easier than you even made it seem. That's where the satisfaction is. Upstairs, the management guru is talking about vision and thinking outside, outside the, box. the box. Except you're the shipping manager. It's your job to think about the box. So you turn to UPS, because now only UPS guarantees the day of delivery for every ground package you ship to any business address coast to coast. Suddenly, options open, paradigm shift, and it's time for a seminar of your own. Introducing Guaranteed Ground, only from UPS. Braves are up by six. Now here's what's on deck brought to you by the good folks at Olympic Stain. Yankees and Braves continue their series at Turner Field tomorrow night and then we'll pick up the finale of the four game series on Thursday and a pitching change there. Denny Nagel will work on Thursday against David Wells and the Blue Jays come to town. We'll have all three of those for you. Scott Brocious will start the bottom of the sixth inning for the Yankees. Tom Glavin working on a three hitter. He has allowed one. Jeter a good piece of hitting took one into those right field seats. The only run of the night. The fly ball from Brocious went to right field. That'll go to right field too, but for a base hit. Hit number four for the Yankees. They've tried to make adjustments, but it's a little too big of a catch up right now to one base him at a time to death, isn't it? Well, I agree, but you know, in this ballpark, and I know you pitched here some. Things Not very successfully, I might add. Well, some things can happen in a hurry here, can't they? Yes, they can. Don Mattingly used to send a car for me. <laughs> big old car, big limo, big stretch limo. Top of the order in Chuck Knobloch. He's grounded to second. He had a liner back at Glavin's period. Glavin has had himself a few chances tonight. He put on a fielding clinic. That's Don Mattingly, and he should thank me for helping him put that there. A big net that covers up the fans who want to go out there and read all the monuments and the numbers that have been retired. And that's why that screen covers a lot of the numbers. Good stop by Javi Lopez. A ball and a strike to Chuck Knobloch. There you are. During batting practice, fans are walking out there and they don't want to get clumped by balls being hit during BP. So if the Yankees put that net up. If you're ever in Yankee Stadium and you get here in time and you're a baseball fan, get here early enough to go out there and take the walk. And if you don't get goosebumps, check the obituaries you're in. Yeah. That is some history out there. Up the middle could be two. Guillen on the bag over to first. 6-3 it'll go in the book but a nice double play. Don I know you were talking about this before the game you and Pete about how 
Tom Glavin when he pitched here last year and shut out the Yankees for nine innings was getting some ground balls and getting out of some trouble when he got in it with some double plays and the Braves have been obliging tonight on any ground ball that he gets. Two of them started by Lockhart that one Guillen standing at the bag as he took it so Glavin will get to go back to the windup as he faces Derek Jeter. Picked up his ninth homer of the year fly to left his second time up. Jeter now with 36 RBI. Up the middle there's Glavin again. A fielding clinic. The Braves starters do that very well among other things. He faces the minimum. Nothing on the board for the Yankees. Six in the books. The lead is six. 